Artisans today may have the advantage of access to a wider choice of materials, and their inspiration may be historical, local, or even global. But what remains constant is the loving workmanship and the desire and need to create. The crafts of old gloriously reinterpreted and refashioned. For its 56th edition, Manila Fame, Asia's design and lifestyle event, highlighted the Filipino artisans and their craftsmanship. The event was organized by the Center for International Trade, Exposition and Missions, or CITEM the Export Marketing Authority of the Philippine Department of Trade and Industry. FAME is um, a signature event of the Department of Trade and Industry. And it's been here for about 56 editions. And what makes it different is that it's 100% pure craftsmanship. Uh -huh. This is the only remaining show in Asia that is devoted to artisanship and craftsmanship and without sacrificing design and artisanship for commercial interest. But at a certain point also, Manila fame is about business. Perfect combination of design and commerciality. The exhibit ran from October 17 to 20 with the theme, The Art of the Craftsman Equals the Soul of the Philippines. Welcoming the visitor outside the main hall was a contemporary art exhibit entitled Journey of the Tao Tao, featuring a number of iconic sculptures made by anonymous craftsmen from Benguet, reworked by five Filipino artists. The name Manila Fame is synonymous actually for design, so all we have to do is just say that it's going to happen on a certain date and buyers flock here. We are actually scheduled during the circuit of Asian shows for gifts and houseware and Manila fame has become a must destination for buyers who are sourcing for quality products. What makes Manila fame different is really the Philippine exporter. They always come out with something different every year. And this is actually a statement that has been copied by everybody else in Asia, but we were the first to say it. It's actually every little product that's shown here by any exporter is handcrafted with their soul. There's a story behind it. There is like a community that has been helped. There are so many jobs that are supported. And there's so much creativity that goes into it. Because every product that you see here is actually a, a labor of love for most exporters. Central to this year's Manila fame was the presentation of the 10 design houses created by internationally acclaimed upcoming Filipino designers who were able to marry their amazing creativity and the country's indigenous materials to create works of art that were both functional and visually appealing. Inigo Elizalde's tribute to the jeepney Tokish's Gregoria, an homage to his mom as well as a nod to religion and family. Milo Naval's collage-like representation of natural materials.
Stanley Ruiz's homage to the original pop-up store, the Oxcart called The Float. Amina Aranaz's twin summer collection, the retro seaside and the oceanic opulence. Daniel De La Torre's sanctuary hands and minds meet to form a soul. Robert Alejandro's whimsical design house Vito Selma's forest full of design and Wataru Sakuma's Infinitimo, an infinite folding storybook of Filipino craftsmanship and artisanship. Every edition of Manila Fame, we come out with something new. And this time around, we have the design houses. This is the time when we are trying to bring in and mentor new young designers. As you go through the show, the first thing that catches your attention would be the style and the design of the houses, no? because each would evoke the design sensibility of each of the designers. There's really no exact formula. Okay. You know? I wish there were, then it would make my life easier. <laughs> but there's none. So I find inspiration um, anywhere I can. Okay. So sometimes it's from my travels, sometimes it's from my childhood, from my dreams, sometimes from ordinary na objects. I find something that I like and then I transform it into something uh, that's personal and as beautiful as I can. Okay. All my designs are very personal. Mm. And when I make something, I share something that's personal with whoever buys it and uses it. I take inspiration from our culture. And by designing it into something modern, it becomes global. Every designer wants to influence society. I'm really always trying to uh, make my work transcend beyond just furniture and objects. No? So now we're doing a lot of spaces, a lot of fun. Uh, ultimately, I want to give back to our people by training other designers, which I'm doing right now, maybe opening a school, you know, and doing, um, you know, sharing what I can. Another highlight of the Manila fame was the craft and style spot. At the craft spot, Filipino craftsmen took on the spotlight, working and crafting natural materials into extraordinary shapes and forms using age-old traditional methods and disciplines, featuring the traditional crafts like the rice baskets of Palawan. The style spot, meanwhile, displayed avant-garde products in a variety of forms, colors, textures, and materials in tune with the three macro trends in the world today, eco-sustainability, hyper-localism, and being in connection. for our bags, all our hand-woven bags, and also that, that's a natural leather as well as in natural materials. Uh -huh. And we are also selling some home accessories as well as our personalized presents. There's a lot of buyers from all over the world that we've met and who are very interested. We normally don't sell to Australia and South Korea, but we've just gotten some, some very good inquiries, so we're very excited about that. We've been with Fame for many, many years. And, you know, and we're going to continue as, as long as they have us. A breath of fresh air was brought to this year's edition through the Garden Pavilion. 
a unique and refreshing alfresco setup with four identified expressions of Asian, American, Britannic, and French, meant to represent an escape from the busy, technology-driven lifestyle and through the use of sustainable local materials and skills of Filipino artisans created quite a breathing space that replenished the soul. Manila fame is known for um, design, for style. It has also a reputation for being more higher priced than uh, most in Asia, but they know that even if they pay higher, they get quality. It's very heartening no, to listen to buyers when you talk to them. They always say that uh, they come to Manila Fame to be able to get the best products. Not necessarily the best prices because then we are quite expensive compared to, um, compared to the rest of Asia. And of course, Manila fame boasted of a large assembly of decorative home accessories and furniture. We have the Merchandise Specialist Program. It actually is a program with um, international consultants to help out most of our exporters who exhibit here. No? Years ago, during the time of Mina Gabor, not one Philippine company can step into Manila Fame without going through product development. But over the years, that has not been maintained. No? So we're trying to bring that back. No? Last October, we, we brought in two new consultants again. And this time around, we have another group of foreign consultants. No? Everybody goes through product development. That is the <laughs> ultimate objective of Manila Fame. The One Town, One Product Marketplace where the best products from all over the country were brought to Manila fame to showcase local skills, techniques, and materials. I came in uh, on the wonderful generosity of Maricris Brias. Okay. She runs the Tadeco, and uh, Tadeco has been known for making the crafts from Lake Cebu, uh -huh. and that she does also on the plantation of Tadeco, the banana fiber. Okay. And so she's already brought it to the 21st century. All our traditional crafts are now at the point in which they have joined the 21st century and its place in the 21st century. And she wanted to do the Maricris collection. Uh -huh. Her creations that she does as curtains and pillowcases and furniture items. From bold fashion jewelry and other gift items, to clutches with textured shell inlays and meticulous metal smithing, the bold products of the meeting of forward-thinking design minds. And the time-tested disciplines of meticulous craftsmanship. All ready to tell the rich Filipino handmade tale and heritage to the rest of the world. One other ambition of Manila fame is to be able to create brand talents, no? like Kenneth Kabumpoe is very successful abroad. We hope to be able to create several more Kenneth Kabumpoes, no? and Saitem is um, going to help the design industry in that respect. Manila Fame is not only a design, style, and export show, 
In fact, I always say that it is a brand. It's a Philippine brand that every Filipino should own and be proud of because it does not only project a good image, it also actually contributes to export sales and to the economy of the Philippines. A craft is an object of beauty as well as utility. It is a functional piece of inspiration. And the artisans of old reached their level of achievement in their heyday. And there is no reason why this recent crop of artisans will not measure up. They are, after all, similarly inspired. All they need is for us to recognize them and support them. I'm Susan Calamidina, Wag Magindayuhan sa Sariling Bayan.